tearing up Uncle Ben's hand. Little groundhog lives in here. What the skibbity? Oh, you capybara mukbang simps. Oh! Happy fall, Beaverton. Still defends his hole. Hammer is as happy as could be. Look at these little boys. Ah! Oh, look at me. My name's Tibby. My resting disposition is tearing up Uncle Ben's hand. But this is how Tibby is all the time, you guys. These guys are about ready to go outside now. I think they could do with a little bit of vitamin D. Or it's nice to have these two bothering me while I'm pooping nowadays. Oh my goodness, look at this Tibby. I'm gonna go ahead and take her to the uh, to our vet friends so see if we can get a temperature read. I tried to read her temperature on my own, but in order to do that, I have to stick a little thing in her bum hole. I have to do that for about a minute straight because I have a cheap thermometer. Look at these two precious little creatures. What the skibbity? Nothing like having two cringe ah uh, bobcats in your bathroom. This is a peak moment for the wildlife rehab. Hippie in the kennel for today. Typically, we don't need to take our animals to the vets to give them exams, but it's a lot easier with three people to hold the little bob kitten down. When you Hippie at the vet for today. Okay, Tibby's reading a 101.8, which is a, basically a fever, but not really. It is in their range. But because she's not eating, we're going to go ahead and see if we can get her some antibiotics. Okay, just like Boo Boo our coyote, Tibby is going to be in here getting amoxicillin twice a day. I'm going to do everything right. I'm going to make sure she stays nice and hydrated. All right, just for a minute, I'm keeping Tibby quarantined until her fever goes down. But honestly, it's not really even a fever. She's still kind of within her temperature range. Oh, get out of here, boy. Oh, look, guys. Karen's just like Homelander. All right, everybody. Look at these little boys. Some of you guys were in the comments asking me what happened to our precious little groundhog, and here he is. He's been living in here hiding this whole time. But now this little guy's a lot more social, and he follows me around every time I come in here. <laughs> This little fella still defends his hole. This guy will let me scratch his little ears and neck and face. And he is still friendly little baby boy. Because we did bottle raise him when he was a tiny little baby. But he eats all the same food that these guys do. They don't get into fights at all. And it looks like these guys have been digging up a storm over here. Look at this. Nice big hole in there. And because it's nice and covered here, it's never going to flood. And I don't think this guy goes in their holes. But I don't think they would mind even if he did. Instead though, he sleeps in here. And all of this is also food for him. And he drinks from the same water bowl. As you guys can see, he's going in there right now. Precious little groundhog. Come to think of it, I think that's actually his hole. So this precious little groundhog lives in here and these guys all live in here. And I'm sure there's some kind of intricate tunnel system underneath here. Precious little burrowing rodents. Normally I wouldn't advise mixing those two species, but bear in mind these two were raised together. We have a unique opportunity to study these two species living together. And it should ultimately be a pretty interesting case study. Why not do a bit of research as well? The cap have been in this little paddock here for a couple days now and there's no poo in there but it is a little bit muddy for them swimming in. it's still going down into the 50s at night for the next couple nights so i still have the tiny babies over at my friend bj's and she's doing an amazing job of bottle feeding those little guys also it's funny that gamer's great great grandson is living here with the cappies now these guys all live in this barn now and in one or two days as soon as the temperature goes back up i'm gonna let these guys have free range of the whole pond again get back the bonzo beans <laughs> But look at all these precious little creatures. Even though this water's all muddy from Bevo, the good thing is there's no algae here. And all of these plants are eventually going to kind of die off for the winter anyways. Get back to Bunzo Beans! Look at this boy swimming right back to me. <laughs> like I said, you guys, Bevo used all of the little building materials and the sticks that I got for him. I'm gonna see if I can get some more for him tonight. It was nice to give this little area a break from grazers. Now Bevo spends the entire day in there and he only comes out at night like a normal beaver. And for the rehabbers that told me it takes two years to rehabilitate a baby beaver, I don't know, you guys. This little guy literally made his own home out of random sticks. He literally Literally just dug his own home and made it out of sticks. I feel like if he went out to the wild right now, he could do that again and impress a little lady with his little home. Sadly, we don't have any girls here, and if we did, it would probably be even more destroyed than it is now. Oh my goodness, look at this baby just hopping around. Oh, that's the first time I've seen him out of the pouch. And that little baby is gonna grow up with this little fella as his big sister. All right, everybody, it's the next day, and praise God, boo-boo. I mean, Tibby, not boo-boo, although I should have just called her boo-boo from the start.
car. Did pee and poop in here? I kept her isolated. I think she just had some indigestion. I'm gonna let her run around the house again. Hey, birdie. Nice poops, boo-boo, thank you. I just went ahead and collected her poos. I also just started to give her milk and she spilled it, which is epic. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge for our vet. We've actually got like seven vets now that all love to work with us, which is awesome. Check this out, you guys. The baby's over there fighting with boo-boo, but I just caught a ton of Inca doves in this flight pen. Look, there's like five of them in here. There are nine Inca doves that are trapped in here. And you know what? They're mine now. How on earth did this happen? How did they all get in here? And then now none of them can get out. I'm not even joking, you guys. I'm keeping those Inca doves. Look at this little fella. Also, I finally went on Craigslist and got a ton of chickens again. And now Gamer is as happy as could be. All of the other ones passed away because of my foxes that were soft released here accidentally. But they are very, very happy here, trust me, because all of the chickens that we had eventually slowly died off. That also could have been for some of the hawks that we released. But as you guys can see, I have 10 chickens here. We're gonna keep a chicken count over the next several videos. But Gamer's great-grandson is obviously too base to be killed by a dang fox. So now he is very happy with all of these wives. And they should all still be laying some eggs. And these chickens will eventually be food for the bobcats and other animals as well. So I sanitized this whole thing with a ton of bleach. But after the whole day, I finally got this little boy trapped in here. And I'm only accessing this room now from here with the double doors. That way, if he does get behind me, it's not the end of the world. Watch this. You see, that's the first thing he does. Now, this boy doesn't like me very much. Excuse me. Oh! Oh, heck no. I don't want any of that. It would suck if he bit me. Oh, I'm barefoot over here, and this little guy's growling at me. Get out of here, dog. Be gone. You're not going to be doing all that. No, what are you doing? This could turn to a live leak video. Oh, God. Yeah, and you and I are gonna be in a little live leak video if you don't like this video. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this so horrifying? He's a little kitten, but I'm not wearing any shoes. I know how bad Tibby can bite me when she's just playing. If this guy's actually feeling scared. Yeah, look at that, ears back and everything. Honestly, it's ideal for his temperament to be like this because he could actually be released. The other Tibby might not, but he might be able to keep her wild. I don't know why he doesn't realize he can just hop back there. And I got these bad boys at HEB. So this will be for the cat Capybara Mukbang channel. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Capybara Mukbang. All right, everybody, this is the setup for Cappy Blappy Mukbang tonight. I have a bunch of videos I'm gonna start posting. By the time you guys see this, there's probably gonna be a couple new ones. Promise I'm finally gonna get back into it. So for all you Capybara Mukbang simps out there, you're finally gonna be getting some new content. Also, there's all kinds of little frogs here at this pond I just filled up. So it's gonna be real nice and cute. Might even hear some of those guys chirping. But look at this precious little baby. Do you guys wanna see 20 to 30 unfiltered minutes of these guys just working on this? Honestly, we could do it for an hour because these things are so big. Go ahead and check out the Capybara Mukbang YouTube channel on the Hit app youtube while these guys are getting filmed for clappity blappity mukbang i'm gonna go ahead and give this little big boy to our precious little beavo because beavers also love pumpkins and for most animals pumpkins stimulate their digestive system because it's a natural probiotic so just in general pumpkins are a great little thing to feed oh there he is slog just snuck up out of nowhere but beavers really do love pumpkins he's not gonna try and swim that over there is he oh look at that you guys he loved a pumpkin happy fall beaver tin look at that big old tail it's getting huge no garbanzo beans ah! all right beaver tin there you go take your carrot watch this you guys he's just gonna swim right back to his hole just like that he's underwater so he doesn't get bothered by garbanzo beans he knows how to hide from this boy now the ducks will like to eat a little bit of that pumpkin too if they can there it is you guys this is the stage for cappy blappy mukbang tonight also we already posted it and people didn't even care so it's over you guys i give up okay gustavo here you go eh. sorry that that little thing got in the way you guys but it's so fun to feed these guys shrimp because they love it and then look this is freak bob you guys oh oh we almost got it this little fella is as blind as a bat you guys oh basically have to hand feed her but she loves the shrimp this little three-legged gator loves hanging out on her little platform check this out you guys she'll even jump for it if i put it in front of her Oh, she's getting very, very athletic. No surprising, because she's only got three little arms. Give her another one. 
Oh, he loves munching on there. And she'll actually climb on top of this thing in front of me now, which means she's a lot more comfortable. Beautiful, beautiful little animal. Here she comes. This is our little female Nile croc. Oh, they all love eating the shrimp, you guys. Shrimp is just a good little thing for them. The reason why it's pink is because they put it in hot water. I didn't actually cook it. It's not good to give them cooked shrimp. Eat it, you little goo. I actually think this little girl would like another one because she is still pretty small. Here you go. Yeah, beautiful little creature. This boy is back inside where he belongs. That's it for now, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Uncle Ben being a goob. Love you guys. I appreciate you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Ooh, I almost forgot to tell. And because I love you guys, here's your base scripture of the day. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>